Hey guys, in this video we are going to build a simple responsive navbar by using Flexbox. Firstly, we will start creating a navigation menu for larger screens and after that I will quickly show you guys how to make it responsive for mobile devices. So you will be able to see how using Flexbox makes the process of building a responsive navigation menu much easier than standard CSS. So if you are ready, let's begin. Well, there are thousands of different examples we can give for creating a navigation bar, but I would like to keep things uh, simple so it will be more understandable for beginners. Okay, so firstly, let's start creating the template of our navigation menu. I will give here a now tag and inside the now tag we can put our elements one div and one unordered list and inside the unordered list there will be some items with some links for example our service another one about us and one for contact and here inside the div tag, I will put a logo. Let's save it. Okay, so now our template is ready. Now let's start styling it. To do that, I'm going to add here a separate CSS file, like main.css, and include the link to our head section. Main CSS and let's see if it finds okay now we are in our CSS file now let's start with resetting our CSS now secondly let's add here a class to our navigation bar now bar you can also give any class names you like you don't have to do exactly the same as I do and here now we can start adding our properties our navigation bar first of all i will give a nice background color let's choose a dark blue okay and i will make every color under of it white so as the next step we need to position the elements under the now bar and we are going to do it with flexbox so i will start with making our now bar a flex container and once i save it now the elements display behavior has changed but we need to work on this a little bit more what i would like to do is to put the logo on the left side and move the list items to the right side of the page and we can do it much easier with flexbox i am going to choose the justify content property and i'm going to give some space between the logo and the list items and the good thing with flexbox is that our elements are always fluid so once the page size increases the space between them also increases the next thing i would like to do is to centralize these elements vertically but let's take some help from our inspector let's put it down okay so firstly let's style our list a little bit let's also give it a another class name like now list now list firstly let's get rid of the bullet points so list style type will be none okay now the bullet points are removed and let's also put the list items side by side so i am going to add here another class and say list item now the thing is that the list items are block level elements but we would like to place them side by side so I am going to use display inline block okay now our list items are also placed side by side now let's add a little bit of height to our navigation menu you can do it with a height property and add like 50 pixels or if you like you can do it with paddings 
So let's add some paddings between our list items. Let's say 20 pixels from top and 10, 10 pixels from left and right. And now it looks a bit better. But the problem is that our logo is still not good aligned. So I'm going to assign an align items property and choose the center. So every element under our now bar will be vertically aligned in the center like this one. Okay. Let's add a larger font size like 20 pixels. Okay. Now it looks a bit larger. Before we move on with the responsive features, there is one last thing I would like to do, which is adding some hovering effect to the elements. Let's also add a link to our logo as well. And let's give a href of, of this character. So since there is not a real page behind it, once you click on this one, it will go back to the home page. And later, if there will be real pages, then, then once the user clicks on them, they will be able to redirect to other pages. Let's also change their color. So all of the anchor tags under now bar is going to have a white color. And let's also remove the underline. Text decoration will be none. By the way, you don't have to remember all of these CSS properties I use here. You can search them on Google if you can't remember uh, like how to do it or else with some, with some time, with some experience, you will be able to remember them much easily. So you don't have to worry about these uh, properties. The important thing here is that just to understand that the display flex container, the flexbox model makes um, building a navigation bar much easier than standard CSS. And let's add a hover effect. So I'm going to write here a hover. And once we hover on it, it should get a different color. Let's say aqua. Okay, now when we hover, we have a nice aqua blue color. If you like, you can also give other colors to your elements. Now as the next step, let's change this logo text with a real icon. There is a nice website called Flat Icon and you can find many logos for free here. So let's choose one of them. So let's add the icon now. Let's put this here. And let's also make it a little bit smaller. Let's give another class primary icon. Primary icon and let's give a smaller height of let's say 40 pixels. Okay, and now it looks much better. Let's make it a little bit smaller. Okay, now it looks much better. Now what about mobile devices? So let's add here another item. Let's say support. Okay, now let's see how this looks on a mobile device. And as you see, since there is not enough space, it looks much broken in, in mobile devices. So now as the second step, now let's also fix the responsive design and see how to do it very easily with Flexbox. So what I'm gonna do next is to hide this list here and to put here an icon. And once the user clicks the icon, then the list should appear back for mobile devices. So let's start building our menu icon. Let's add a class here, menu. And inside, I'm going to put lines, menu line. Let's make three of it. Okay, so let's go back to our CSS and here, menu line. This will have a width of let's say 20 pixels, a height of three pixels, a background color of white. The height looks a bit large because we see all the three of them. So let's give a little bit of margin. Let's say margin top or margin bottom of 
three pixels. Let's make it four. Okay, now our menu is there. This is also known as hamburger menu or toggle menu, you can say. So this menu is going to appear only for mobile devices. And once the user clicks on this icon, then we should be able to see the list. So now let's get some help from media queries. So media all and let's say a maximum width of 480 pixels. So once the screen size is smaller than 480 pixels, then our new rules will appear. So what I want to do is to hide our menu for larger screens, but to make it visible for mobile devices. So let's try. Now I'm making it smaller. And as you see, our menu icon is back. And once we expand the size, then the icon is disappeared. Now what to do next is now to take this list below. And we can do that in a very easy way, again by using our Flexbox features. The only thing we need to do is to change the direction of our Flex elements. Normally, by default, the elements of a Flexbox container has a horizontal a row of direction. We can change this to a vertical direction. So, Flex direction will be a column and once I save it now the flex elements have a column a, a vertical direction but this is not exactly what I want what we would like to do is to take this menu above here and to put this one again to the left and the null list each on a single row so let's do this first of all I'm going to take our menu our menu icon out of the flex box so I'm going to give a position absolute I'm going to place it somewhere here so right 10 pixels and top let's say another 10 pixels okay let's make it 15 and now it looks much better now let's take our list items each of them in a single row and to do that this time I'm going to use some help from our developer tools so this is our list item by the way, if you want to work with developer tools, just click on the right mouse button and say inspect element. So this part will be appear and click on this icon to select an element of your layout. Okay, so now I am selecting one item and let's change their display behavior to block. Okay, let's also add a little border to make it look better. One pixel solid and white let's make it full size so i'm going to add to our list a hundred percent of width okay we also want to have these elements in the center so i'm going to write text align center now it looks much better but i think the paddings are a little bit large so let's make all of them 10 pixels and let's add some space here. So padding top can be a, let's say 10 pixels. Now let's move our logo to the left side again. And to do that, I'm going to style the parent div and add a hundred percent of width. Looks much better. And let's try some margins. Let's say margin left, 10 pixels and margin top another 10 pixels looks much better now i'm going to copy these rules okay so i've copied all of the rules to my text editor and now as we see the responsive design is fixed and working very good but the thing is that we don't want always the list to stay open like this and normally users only see the list once they click on this toggle item so we need to add a little bit of javascript code here so let's do that okay so normally when we are on mobile view the item list should be hidden by default so that's why first of all we need to disable our navigation list when we are on mobile view the correct navigation should be something like that 
And once we click on this button, then we will be able to see the list again. And that's why now we need to add a little bit of JavaScript code. But before that, I need to add some active class because we need that on JavaScript. And what the active class does is that it's going to bring our list back. Okay, now let's start creating our JavaScript quickly. Here under the body, I'm going to define a script tag. And now what I want to do is to get our button and to assign it to a variable. And there are a couple of ways. I'm going to use the classic ID way. You can also use other ways if you like. So we need to add here a short ID. Let's say toggle button. And copy it inside. We need a second variable for our navigation list. Let's say navi list. And again, I'm going to use an ID for that. Let's also define an ID for our navigation list. Let's say navi list. And we can call it here. Now comes the tricky part. We need to add an event listener to this button. So when the user clicks on the button, it will make the necessary changes. Toggle button, add event listener, and our event listener will be a click event, and then it should run a function. Now inside the function, we need to add a toggle method, which will add the active class on the first click and the list will be shown. And when the user clicks for the second time, then it will be toggled and the active class will be removed. So this is what I'm going to do here. Now list dot class list and it's going to toggle our active class. So when I run this function, it should overwrite the display behavior of our navigation list. So let's try. And as you can see, at the first click, now it adds. Let me also show this on, on developer tools. Now we can see the active class here. When I click again, then the active class is gone. And when I click one more time, then the active class is back. So this is basically what this function does. And this is how we can use JavaScript for a basic usage like this. And when I expand the screen, then we can see our list is back. So guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you do, please hit the like button. You can also check out the playlist for my other related videos about Flexbox. Thank you very much for watching and see you soon.